Welcome to the Perfectly Integrated Podcast, hosted by Matt Ackerman, where we show the power of teamwork in wealth management. Now, on to the show. Culture. It's a word that's often used, often aspired to, but rarely does anyone understand how critical a great culture is. Some companies even set up culture committees to try to build that perfect culture. Now, here's the truth, and it's something an old friend told me. Culture happens in moments, not in memos. So what can companies, what can firms, what can advisors do to improve their company's culture, and why does it matter? Well, today I have the master of Integrated Culture, the Chief Implementation Officer, Andre Peterson, here with us, as well as George Moriarty, the Chief Content Officer at Investment News. Investment News has honored Integrated for the second year in a row as one of the industry's best places to work. And I was excited to find out why, and I imagine our culture has just a little bit to do with it. So, George, Andre, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Matt, really looking forward to the conversation. Been a long time since we could catch up. Absolutely, buddy. And Andre, so good to have you here, too. I, you know, I've loved the opportunity to work together. And finally, I get to ask you some questions here on the podcast. Well, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. So, so Andre, I'm going to start with you. What does the word culture mean to you? To me, it means who an organization is. It's kind of like the personality of an organization. Um, You can learn so much from a company by their culture. And I believe the same is true here at Integrated. It defines our organization. It shares perspectives on our company to outsiders and really just creates experiences people then can then pass along. So Integrated is no different. Um, You know, I think our culture is our personality. It's who we are. And we definitely protect it pretty fiercely here at Integrated. George, do you think financial firms, advisory firms, do you think they understand kind of culture and really the value of having a good culture? They do, but more specifically, I'm going to answer that broadly because all of the firms understand the concept of culture but I think it's the successful ones that actually have it. And, and when I was thinking about this, what really struck me is if you go to the oldest of old school advisory firms, Merrill, the thundering herd, Mother Merrill, they had culture in, embedded in their soul before culture was a thing. And when I worked there from 2008 uh, until 2012, like you could see how important that culture was and people, didn't just go to work, they, they bled it, they had this loyalty to it. And, and the older school guys talked about the value of the Merrill culture. And a lot of firms try to replicate that. And it's really striking to me. And the reason I emphasize that the successful ones do is you don't achieve culture by trying to replicate what Merrill did or recreate what we did here, but it has to come from the top and you have to build a culture where everybody's working together. And really what Andre just said about what's going on at Integrated really struck me is, you know, when you have that culture where people are on the same page and feel that they're working together toward a common goal and that they know it's from top to bottom, that really helps people come through. And and I do think, and, and it goes back to that old school mindset of the older advisory firms, that a successful advisory firm is always going to be looking to make sure that they have that culture and people understand it. So it's about knowing thyself, being thyself, and ultimately, you know, not trying to imitate someone else. And, and to continue that, to thine own self be true. <laughs> exactly. So, Andre, talk to me about that culture that you really helped to cultivate at Integrated. Yeah, I mean, when I first joined Integrated, it was amazing to me how the culture was everywhere. It was just a way of doing things at Integrated where we truly support each other. I mean, our goal is to support advisors, help advisors grow, help advisors make their lives easier. And, you know, our tagline built by advisors for advisors, you know, you have your clients' backs, we have yours. To George's point, I mean, we have a message that everybody can get behind and everybody does here at Integrated. Um, You know, when Paul started our firm 20 years ago, it's what he was all about. And everybody he's brought into this organization is similar and to the point that we just want to help our advisors grow. We want to support them in what they want to do. And 
it's just great that we do that across from the advisor perspective, but even the advisor support staff and even amongst our management team. I mean, if one person is down, it's about lifting them up and supporting them. And, you know, the team really rallies behind each other as we go through different points in life and advisors go through different life cycles within their organizations as well. So Andre, just to follow up to that, sometimes growth can be the enemy of culture because you're bringing in new people, new voices, new opinions, new personalities. How do you ensure that you're constantly building up that culture and staying true to your culture, even as you grow and add people and, and personalities to the mix? Yeah, it's something that is extremely important to us. So everybody we bring on goes through an initial process of kind of getting to know our team. And, you know, there's proof in that process of the services we provide, the, ex, you know, the extensive expertise and all of these other things. But I always say there needs to be a personality match where the personality of the people that we're bringing into integrated, whether they're a member of our management team, you know, staff or advisors or a new advisor, we want to make sure that they understand our culture and want to be a part of it because we want people to be happy to be a part of integrated, feel supported by integrated and really to continue that culture. So we, have this kind of personality match. We also go through a Colby process to kind of get to know people's unique abilities and understand, you know, what people's unique abilities are and making sure that we're supporting them in really truly focusing just in that unique ability so they can be happier and they can be thriving in what they do. And Andre, I really love what you said where you were inclusive of the entire company referencing not just the advisors, but the, the support staff as well. Because, you know, I, I always go to a sports analogy and I think, you know, in some ways, you know, the advisors are, might be considered, you know, the stars. If for a soccer analogy, they might be the strikers, right? But you need that whole team out there pulling together for success. So I really think that's key, what you're talking to about having the whole team be on board. Thank you. I appreciate that. It is so important because you know, advisors are limited by time and we want to make sure we, they have great support staff that can help them kind of get to the next level, protect their time, you know, move up that complexity curve. And in order to do that, George, to your point, they need to have staff who are knowledgeable, but also happy to come to work. I mean, we want to create an environment where people are happy to be here. They get up in the morning, they're excited to come to the office and talk to their, you know, friends and things like that. So, you know, it was interesting for us when the whole pandemic first started, we just missed each other and we would get on these Zoom calls and just talk about what everybody had going on because we didn't get to see each other anymore. And I think that's such an important piece of our culture at Integrated. Yeah. And you know, what's really interesting talking about post COVID realities um, and Matt can speak to this investment news, particularly the editorial team had a few folks who were remote and a lot of them, you know, were voices coming over a polycom for a long time. On the other hand, I think our culture actually grew stronger because we started doing zoom meetings. So now we're seeing everybody uh, down in the Washington office, Jeff Benjamin in North Carolina. It's really great pulling the whole team together and having everybody see everybody every day. It is a lot better when you can get on a Zoom call and just look at it, somebody and know that you're truly paying attention to each other. It's a different level of connection than a phone call. So I totally agree with you on that. The Zoom meetings have definitely helped, especially us as well, you know, because we are national, we have our advisors all over the country that we get to see them and connect with them in a different way it has been really great. This, this pandemic has been a, a test of culture, but I think what it's illustrated is that companies that have great people and great personalities that ultimately are working together towards a common goal, they've been the ones that have excelled. And to your point, George, these are the companies that have gotten stronger through the pandemic and their culture has gotten stronger and their companies have gotten stronger because at the end of the day, they're all rowing the boat in the same direction. 100%.
I know you guys have put together your best places to work list and, you know, we're honored and integrated to be on that list for the second year in a row. Tell me a little bit about the list and ultimately what makes integrated a great place to work. Sure. So uh, on March 1st, we published our, for our fourth annual list and we're highlighting 75 firms and, and we do this in partnership with best companies and it's a real honor to do. It's one of the things that I think separates investment news because we don't just look at who's got the most assets under management, what I call the scoreboard reporting. You know, we're finding the places that are trying to um, stand out and provide those ancillary benefits that make, as Andre said, you want to come to work. You want to, you know, be excited about seeing your colleagues. So the way we go about the process, it's, it's a two-part survey and it's focused on employer policies and benefits. Firms answer a questionnaire on the policies that they have in place and the benefits that they offer to employees. That, that's the first part. And you know, because the advice industry competes so hard for talent, it's really important to get that sentiment from people of where that's coming from. And then we also do a second component, which is employee attitudes. So, that the, so that's where the firm employees weigh in on their benefits. You know, do they feel the company's behind them? So among some of the things that help firms like integrated for two years running and who's been chief content officer for two years, you know, just saying, um, you know, the, the things that help a firm stand out, bonuses for referring new hires, two thirds of the best places to work do this versus 53% of firms that don't qual that don't get the award. Paid time off for community service or volunteer work. What's better than knowing that you can take a day off to do something for your community? some year-round flexible work hours, um, fitness and wellness programs, paid parental leave. Um, you know, Matt, you and I are close enough of an age. You know, you might remember, I know all four of my kids, I had to use vacation time for my mm -hmm. um, parental leave. Uh, and, you know, these companies that are more progressive and offering that parental leave to, to everybody in the family, hugely important. As to, you know, integrated particularly, when Integrated wrote about what makes it an attractive workplace for their staff, they said, we have a wonderful supportive culture that acts more like a family than a business organization. We look out for, encourage, and help each other out both personally and professionally. That really sums it up. And the results that come back in talk about what you're seeing. <clears throat> the results that are coming out talk about what you're seeing and how the employees are reacting to that. It is, um, those results are always telling, and you just know the, name, the names that make the list, like integrated, have the attitude that Andre's put forward here, have the people that are working to support that kind of climate and environment that really helps everybody um, excel together. So Andre, you hear all this, you know, does making a list like this help attract new advisors to integrate it? It does. It helps advisors see that our message is real, that there's meat behind what we're saying. When we're out there telling advisor practices that we want to help them grow, we have these different divisions that can be their catalysts to get to the next level. Um, and we are constantly innovating to try to support our advisors. These types of lists really do help us in that because it shows that it's real because the people who work here are anonymously voting on all of these different things. You know, and these lists have been great for us because they help us look towards things we wanna do or things we might need to improve. I mean, to George's point, Investment News does a great job with their survey because it has a lot of questions in there that are really good kind of gut checks. Are we doing a good job here with you know, paternal leave as well as maternal leave and how can we be better? And so it's definitely not only just that outward facing, but it's that kind of backstage stuff, making sure we have all of that in place for our team. That's a great component of the investment news survey. But it just, you know, I think for us, it just shows that our model works and that we're different in how we support our advisors. So we are honored to have made the list again and love the message that it helps put out for us. I was honored when I came to Integrated because I got to put together a little thing um, around the holidays where we really um, highlighted some of the amazing, amazing work that um, 
our advisors are doing in their communities. And it was just so incredible to see firsthand that, you know, these are really good people that, um, you know, and they're not doing it for the thank yous, the accolades, the praise, they're, they're really in tune with their communities. And George, to your point, this, this is stuff that kind of goes beyond culture, but I think it gets to that people and personality that are the kind of folks you really want to build around. 100%. And I really think that what comes out of that is, and this were some of the overall results that came out of our survey. You know, I think leaning into some of the data that came out of the cultural and leadership characteristics that, that were found in all of the best places that won, you know, 95% of employees at winners said there's adequate planning of departmental objectives. How great is it to know what you're supposed to be doing every day? Because who hasn't been in a place where you didn't know what was going to be on the agenda at 905? Again, more than 90% say there's adequate follow through of departmental objectives. <clears throat> 91% changes that may affect me are communicated to me prior to implementation. No surprises. Nobody wants to be surprised. And then, and, and this is so important this year, um, you know, brought to the fore last summer. But 94% of employees at winning firms said that my employer enables a culture of diversity that has to be there for uh, people to feel comfortable at work and people have to feel comfortable having those conversations. And, um, and then also just always, particularly in tough economic times, people can get worried about staffing levels. Well, 89% of the uh, best places to work employees said staffing levels are adequate to provide these quality services so that they know that the company's doing everything that they can and the firm's doing everything that they can to make sure that they're not, um, you know, to, to borrow the phrase, cutting muscle when they're looking at how things and that they're running an effective operation. I think that's so important for people to take away those areas to understand really how a firm can and should succeed and particularly a firm that's focused on its culture can learn from these findings. Andre, what are some of the great cultural things you're seeing integrated advisors doing every day? You know, what you mentioned, Matt, about helping the community is definitely a big thing that we see our advisors doing every day. And we're always honored to help them and bring awareness to what they're doing um, to support their communities. But it's also helping each other out through, you know, we host advisor study groups and we do a call every Wednesday. It's our Wednesday brunch series where we get together and we share ideas and talk about things that are going on in advisors practice so they have people to talk to. You know, a lot of times being an advisor can be kind of a lonely occupation because you feel like you're constantly competing against everybody else in the industry and you just want somebody to talk to and share ideas with. And through our culture of support, we've been able to build a safe environment where people can talk to each other and really help each other and, and lend hands through just even support staff and things like that. So, you know, we always try to support them and they'll come together and say to us, you know, we need these services and we'll find a way to innovate and bring that back to them. But it's that it's that support of each other that makes integrated culture so great so they can then go and do what they're best at, which is helping their clients. George, investment news is always a step ahead. What's on the horizon from here? What are you guys looking at as you look at 2021 and beyond? Yeah, I mean, so much. It's uh, it's it's nice of you to say that. You know, as you know, the the investment news rep is why I uh, joined the company. And, and really, I'm so proud to you know be able to be leading the content efforts at a company that is focused on um, identifying the next generation of leaders in our uh, projects like 40 Under 40, identifying great companies to work at like we are here, um, you know our diversity efforts. And so where we're really going is you know if you think about it, we've got this great core um, you know that I'm so lucky to be able to be a part of. And where we're looking to take that is extend that great reputation and knowledge into the areas that we know matter to advisors. So what do I mean by that? You know, we've, we started uh, a strong initiative on ESG when you were here. Uh, we're continuing that initiative that we began with the UN back in 2019. Um, we're going global on the ESG front really becoming the source for advisors who want to work with their clients 
and to help understand what's next for the ESG world and, and making sure it covers all of ESG, the environmental, the social, and the corporate governance. Um, looking into the fintech world, we just launched fintech for advisors, which I think is really exciting because particularly with all the changes over the last year, how important is the technology supporting advisors come to the fore so everybody knows what they need there, right? And you know, other areas that we're looking at are just continuing to try to identify those niches and those opportunities where we know that we've got Jeff Benjamin, you know, covering the RIA world like a blanket, right? But we, you know, so let's dive deeper. What do the RIAs need to succeed, for instance? And just continuing to extend that reach so that we're providing, you know, best in class events, uh, best in class research. And as always, the, the leading analysis of and information on what's going on around the advisor space. Well, I can speak from experience. Investment News has a great culture, a great culture for creativity, a willingness to let people kind of uh, really explore their uh, creative ideas. You know, you mentioned the work uh, that I had such a pleasure to work on at, at Investment News with the United Nations and ESG. It's, it's, it's that kind of culture that keeps people reading you guys, keeps uh, your employees engaged, and, and it's something always to really build on. I just wanted to follow on that and just emphasize too, one of the things we're, that's coming is on our event business, like that project that you helped kick off, is you know the events world cha- went, got turned on its head last year. We wanna take that event, what we learned from events and have done virtual. We don't know what the event world's gonna look like down the road, but we wanna make sure that we continue to bring those events to people where they are, wherever that may be. And if I knew, <laughs> That'd be a whole different story, but you know, I think that's really important, and it's part of that culture of adapting and, and building the way you're describing integrated doing too, Andre. So, Andre, what's what's your big takeaway here? Uh, simply, what's the key to a great culture, whether it's an investment news or uh, integrated or at any advisory firm? I think it's consistency in the foundation of the culture and consistency in who you are. I mean, George mentioned investment news is a place where people can go or advisors can go to get information about our industry. And, you know, if I'm looking for something, I'm always going to investment news. And it's that consistency in what they do and what you're pushing out that I think is so important. That's how you get people kind of on board with your culture. And that's how it like truly seeps into an organization, but it's gotta be genuine too. So luckily, you know, culture a lot of the times is top down. And so with Paul and everybody on our management team, you know, it's became just how we show up every day and that consistency in how we engage with our advisors and what we're working towards every day to support them, you know, it's luckily it's easy to do at Integrated. Show up, do your job, be consistent. You can tell I'm in New England Patriot country occasionally when <laughs> when I hear these things. Um, Andre, George, it's been a great conversation. Now we end every one of our podcasts the same way. And that's with a question from my nine-year-old son, CJ. Now I told him today we were talking about culture and I explained that culture is what makes you feel good and makes you want to work harder at your job. Um, so CJ asked me to ask both of you guys, what was your first job and what made you quit? He said, my dad worked at a Dairy Queen and that's a job I'd never quit. Okay, good point from a nine-year-old. I guess he never want to quit Dairy Queen. Um, I quit Dairy Queen because I got a job writing obituaries. So I thought that was a step up. Uh, so Andre, what was your first job and what made you quit? I don't know about ice cream to obituaries, but I see how it was evolving your goal of storytelling. Um, Mm -hmm. My first job was I was a waitress and I got to be honest, I did absolutely love it. I thought it taught me so many wonderful life skills about having a million things going on, but still staying cool and, you know, being able to not show your stress to the kind of patrons at the restaurant but I quit because the hours were just not great. So George, what was your first job and what made you quit? So my first job was the only job I'd ever wanted from the time I started skiing at four years old as I worked, I got hired at the ski area in my hometown, uh, Mount Tom. And I was 14, which I'm not sure what the Massachusetts labor laws were at that point, but for some reason they tended to schedule me to work a couple hours before anyone was on the premises. 
Uh, and I was just cleaning the place up. And I worked at that place until I graduated from, from college and moved to New York to become a broker. It was a great first job because I worked for the general manager of the ski area. It was one of these guys. He would get on you, but I learned the greatest management trick I've ever learned from him is if you're going to have somebody, if you're going to give somebody a task, make sure that they've seen you do that task too. Nothing is beneath you and show yourself how, show them that you're willing to do the work that you want them to do as well. And he was famous for walking around the ski area. They had uh, wood chip paths on some areas and he would pick cigarette butts because this was the 1980s and people still smoked. <laughs> he would pick those up out of the, out of the wood chips. And I'll tell you what, if I had stayed in the hometown, I would have worked for that guy forever. And that was a big lesson for me. But I quit to pursue life in the big city and someday meet Matt Ackerman. That's everybody's secret goal. <laughs> well, Andre, George, thank you both so much for taking some time to chat today, explaining culture to me better and uh, really you know, getting me pretty excited um, about what may lay ahead for both the investment news and integrated. This was a great conversation today. Thank you both. Thank you so much, Matt. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, George. It was great chatting with you. Content in this material is for general information only and not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual. All performance referenced is historical and is no guarantee of future results. Securities offered through LPL Financial, member FINRA SIPC. Investment advice offered through Integrated Partners, a registered investment advisor and separate entity from LPL Financial. George Moriarty is the Chief Content Officer of Investment News and is a separate entity and not affiliated with Integrated Partners and LPL Financial.